So last Saturday, we had a live event with uh, Birelli Legren. It was a last minute thing because the original plan didn't pan out. It was a huge success. Birelli enjoyed himself and I think most of you who tuned in enjoyed yourselves as well. So thank you very much for that. And for those of you who missed it, you have until May 1st to get in touch with me at mrdmmc at gmail.com, which is the same as my, my PayPal. Um, you have until May 1st to get in touch with me to watch this video. After which I will send all the money, well most of the money, to Birelli. Uh, and I'm doing this to help out all these artists who lost all their gigs. And if you're curious about what you missed, let's watch a little clip. So that was Birelli improvising a uh, last minute gig all on his own for 60 minutes. He entertained us. We're going to do this again. He enjoyed himself and uh, we would like to do it again. So probably in a month's time, uh, I'll announce this on my Facebook or my Instagram. So be sure to follow me there as well. In this video, I want to talk to you about this upcoming event on May 2nd. That's Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. France time, uh, noon, New York time. 9 a.m. Los Angeles time. It's going to be with another monster musician. His name is Rocky Gresset. <laughs> This is part of a Q&A slash mini concert series that I've been organizing with most of the proceeds going to all the artists who were severely affected by um, this pandemic going on. Before I start with today's content, I want to um, let you know that, you know, th these videos that I make, I offer them for free and they take quite a bit of time in preparation to make. In some cases, I have to hire people to help me out. And so if you don't mind, it really helps to like, to comment, to share. All this actually makes a huge difference with the uh, YouTube algorithm. The more engagement there is, the more likely it is that YouTube will somehow feature my videos and then reach a bigger audience, etc. So thank you very much for considering this. Furthermore, if you even want to somehow compensate me, help me out, well then you can consider checking out my Sound Slice Beginner uh, Gypsy Jazz course or something from my DC Music School. And you have all the links in the YouTube description box. So Rocky, in my opinion, is one of the best there is. And he is not very well known. He is actually known in French jazz circles because he plays with the cream of the crop over there. But otherwise, 
he's not famous at all. And why is that? Well, it's simply because he never sought any kind of fame or attention. Actually, he just recently joined Instagram, so be sure to follow him. He seems to be enjoying himself quite a lot on Instagram. <laughs> He's a very low-key guy who's not interested in developing his career any more than he needs to. I know firsthand that he's turned down so many career-building, you know, opportunities just because, you know, he just enjoys his current life. That's all he needs. That's all he wants. In the Manush Gypsy tradition, the um, family plays an incredibly, incredibly important role in their culture. And for many of them, it's extremely, extremely difficult for them to be apart even for a few days. So he's very much uh, firmly rooted in that tradition. He makes a living playing uh, backing up artists, usually pop artists. He is uh, Thomas Dutron's uh, guitar player. Thomas Dutron is one of the big pop names in France. And uh, he plays the occasional jazz festival gigs under his name, but more, more often than not as a sideman as well. That's his life. That's, he's happy doing just that. And that is also why many people have not heard of him. But make no mistake, in my opinion, he's really an elite among the elite. If you don't believe me, well, believe me when I say that Birel Lagren highly, highly respects him. Don't take my word for it, take Birelli's word. Furthermore, if you go to my uh, DC Music School YouTube channel, you can see all the clips that I did with him when we worked together a few years ago. There's the In the Style of Rocky Gresset lessons available on DC Music School. So what's so incredible about Rocky, you ask? Basically, he's a self-taught musician with incredible ears, like really, really incredible ears, and an innate sense of uh, intuition and time feel. He's someone who's never, ever worked with a metronome, yet he feels time in such a deadly precise way. Everything is incredibly like precise, but he also purposely plays a little bit behind. And all this is happening in his subconscious, yet in some strange way, all of it is also deliberate. It's because he heard he's copying the time feel of the musicians that he heard, and his body just naturally absorbed this time feel. He also never really lifted any solos before. He just has these incredible ears, perfect pitch, and he can just listen to something and just absorb everything, the harmony, the melody, and he incorporates it right away into his own playing. Just like Birelli, he's a natural and raw player like that. But make no mistake, he spent his entire ch childhood playing guitar, like practicing, practicing, playing, 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 listening, listening. And of course, so, you know, that saying 10% talent, 90% hard work probably is true here. It's just that in his case, the 10% of talent allowed him to reach a really high level faster than most people and higher than most people. And you know, I've tested him many times. Like I remember being backstage with him before a concert that we did and we were just talking about songs, random songs. And there would be all these songs that he had never played before, but that he had heard somewhere. And spontaneously, he would just come up with these solo guitar renditions. And these solo guitar uh, tunes would be not only so beautiful, but also harmonically and melodically intricate. And actually, he did a video for me. I asked him to make a promo video for this Saturday. And here's something that he just improvised on the spot. <laughs>
there's no need to warm up. It just comes out like that, just like Birelli. So I hope you guys will tune in. He made all these little videos at my request so that I can share it with you guys to really show you how incredible a musician he really is. I promise you that this will be an amazing event, so really get in touch with me, MrDMMC at gmail.com. Okay, so this is not just a promo video, I also want to share some like educational stuff with you as well. And before I continue with this video, before you continue watching this video, make sure you watch the one that I uploaded on April 25th. I think it's called Learn with Birelli Lagren, something like that. Watch that video. In that video, I talked about the ability to learn from anyone, no matter your level. And this is an important topic because a lot of people have low self-esteem and put themselves down. And I don't believe in that. I, I sincerely believe that all of us have the potential to improve our situation. Of course, it requires some work. But um, in that video, I talked to you about how you can de develop the ability to learn from someone as advanced as Birelli, even if you're a beginner. And I want to continue a little bit in that direction in this video. I talked about a few conditions that you need to be able to do this. And these conditions can be easily trained. Furthermore, the more you train these skills, the better and easier it gets. Whereas Rocky and Birelli have this incredible natural talent that very few have. Some, if no, not most of us, are able to... How do I say? Uh learn the way they did with some with some hard work and let me rephrase that just in case there's some misunderstanding i believe that their way of learning is one of the most natural and best ways to learn. not the only way but not all of us can learn the way they do right off the bat like they were able to for us to be able to learn the way they did we have to acquire certain we may have to acquire certain skills if um, you already have the set skills, then good for you. This video may not be for you. So what would these skills be? One of them could be acquiring some very basic knowledge of theory. And you do this in order to understand how certain things work. Knowledge, like really basic stuff. Knowledge of what, what it means to play in a key, like C major. The chords in C major. Things like that. Basic knowledge of chords, major, minor, all the basic shapes really, major, minor, what, dominant, uh, fully diminished, minor 7, flat 5. Uh, basic knowledge of arpeggios, things like that. I don't think that's like brain surgery. It's not complicated theory, that's for sure. Knowledge of basic chord progressions, you know, 2, 5, 1. The more you know, of course, the better. So I'm not saying here to go like crazy with uh, your study of studies of music theory, but like really the, the bare minimum. I could make a longer video about this and maybe I should one day, but right now I just want to give you a quick explanation. Another skill is to be able to figure out music by ear. Unless you're tone deaf, which very, very few of us are, then you can improve your ears. So the, abil the ability to figure out music by ear, it doesn't matter how long it takes you as long as you're able to do it. For example, you can take the melody to something that we've all heard, hopefully, the happy birthday theme, and try to figure out, grab your instrument, and try to figure out, figure it out by ear. And this is where some kind of basic knowledge of music theory might help. Because chances are, well it is in this case, I can tell you, that it's all simple, it's all in the same key. So if we take this key of C, you just have to choose a note from the key of C to figure out where it starts. I'll give you the answer. It actually doesn't start on the root. It starts on the fifth, which is G. And then from there, you do it by ear. And since we know it's in the key of C, we only have seven notes to work with. We don't have the 12 chromatic tones anymore. So it's easier already by eliminating five notes. If you know the, key, the scale of C major, you can choose the notes until you find what's right. Well, what does the melody do? Well, you know it goes up, right? Da, da, de, da. Da, da. And then you're going to find. So if you know the C major scale. Ah. Then it goes down. Ah. It's higher than that. So you do it like this. No, you know, it, it's okay if it takes you a long time to do it, but you do it. So this ability is, in my opinion, crucial. 
the more you train this ability, the faster you'll get it. That's why I don't believe in using transcriptions. I believe in doing the work yourself. It's a lot harder in the beginning, that's for sure. But as you do it, it gets easier and easier and easier. And people write emails to me all the time. They say, like, yeah, Dennis, you're right. You know, I, I never realized it. But we know I've been transcribing for a year since you told me to do it. And I noticed myself getting faster and faster. I guarantee you, you will get better at it. You just have to do it. If you never start, you'll never have it. So just do it. The next skill is not as important, but it's, a, it's still a very big one and one that I, I admittedly use a lot. It applies to instruments that have a certain visual aspect to them. So the guitar is such an instrument. And truthfully, a lot of musicians in the Manush Gypsy community learn this way as well, especially in the beginning. So that's the ability to watch someone else someone else's hands and then to grab your instrument and copy based on what you saw. France is currently under lockdown and a lot of people are confined in their homes. So the French gypsies, they started this WhatsApp group, I think it's called Django Challenges. It's a daily challenge to learn uh, a Django phrase. So basically they record the phrase on video, up to tempo, and then slowly with the, uh, the camera on the fingers and everyone has to play to the best of their ability the, the phrase of the day. Every day there's a new quote-unquote teacher and it was my turn to be teacher a few days ago. I showed my thing, I played the thing at 100% tempo, then I did it at a half speed. And then the moderator, which is Noe Reinhardt's son, Dawson Reinhardt, asked me to do it slower and also to have a better view of my fingers so that the players, the quote-unquote students, can watch my fingers and copy what I did. A very useful tool, and it's a, kid, it's a tool that a lot of these kids used when they would watch their elders jam, watch the fingers where they are for chords, then go to their rooms and grab a guitar and try to copy the chords. Of course, the ear is much better, but it's, it's still a very useful tool, and I really recommend that you develop this skill. With that said, let's talk about some ideas that I got from uh, Rocky. I spent this morning watching a lot of the videos that I recorded with Rocky back in the day and also some of the videos that he did for me that I shared with you earlier. And I came up with this improvisation on uh, the chord changes of Coquette, trying to use as many as Rocky's ideas as possible as I could fit in one chorus. So I recorded the solo, then I watched it and then broke down the ideas that I used. So one of the things that I noticed Rocky liked to do is when he had a minor chord, he liked to do this thing. So in this case, it's E minor. He likes to do this. So he ends up on the ninth, which is this F sharp, and goes to the th root. So I, what did I do? I did something like, like a D major. I connected D, then E minor. So that's one typical Rocky move. He did this so many times in my recordings. And also, like, if you watch videos of him, he's likely to use this idea at some point. The next idea I use is very, is deceptively simple, but he changes one note to make it sound cooler. So it's the idea of using a tritone substitute. In the key of A7, in the key of D, sorry, over A7, the tritone substitute would be E flat. By the way, I can't find my pick because I'm playing with my fingers. So this is the arpeggio. But he changes one note. Instead of starting on the B flat, which is the fifth of E flat, he starts on A. Then that's another thing that Rocky likes to do. Then what I do? Oh, this altered scale, A7. So all this is over A7. So you can take these ideas and use them yourself. And then he does this cool turnaround thing. He doesn't, when he does, he doesn't do it exactly like that, but I, I decided to transform it myself to fit, to fit my own uh, way of doing things. So this, it's thinking this, F sharp minor, F minor, E minor, then A7. And then what did I do? I did, I don't remember exactly, like I did some sort of D major thing, but I remember where I ended. I play this A sharp over D. So D major, I'm thinking D major. To D major over with a D major with an A sharp here. 
and the goal is to eventually reach E minor. And then over E minor, I don't play this note right away, this B. I do this lick. So this lick came from uh, a WhatsApp chat. But sometimes Rocky messages me with like himself playing guitar and say, hey, transcribe this lick and see if you can play it. And if you can play it, I'll invite you to a barbecue. So, <laughs> and he played it really, really fast. And here's the idea that he played for me. He actually did it in C minor. He had done it here. Let me do it slowly. As this small classical guitar it's easier to do those chords so that was the lick he showed me over c minor slash f7 and that was my challenge i figured it out and he owes me a dinner <laughs> next time i go to france so yeah i used the same idea on coquette on the e minor a7 then what did i do ah here's another idea that he likes to do over uh, a dominant chord to major he does this he does this kind of ar the augmented arpeggio <laughs> And then he descends with a G major 7 arpeggio, or B minor if you want. And then he likes to do that. Over E7, my goal was to reach this chord, which is some kind of E7 chord. What's it got? It's got the flat 7, it's got the 3rd, the, the 13, the regular 9, the sharp 5. So I did this kind of... I don't know what I played. Then I went down a half step, so it becomes A7. This is the flat 5 or sharp 11, whatever you call it. Then I did this chord, this interesting. The top half is B ma C sharp major, the bottom half is D major. And then I did this D major arpeggio. Actually, I don't know if Rocky does this. I don't know who I got this from. So then I did this arpeggio starts D major, then F sharp major. Then to E minor. And then I did this little chord thing, E minor. This is a rocky chord. E minor 11. And then before going to A7, we go through this. What did he do? It was this, this. Sorry, yeah. Which is like some sort of B flat 7 chord. And then we go down a half step and we reach A7. I don't know if that's the one I used, but I did eventually did use this one. This A7 with a flat 9. Then I ended on this funky D major chord so it's got the six it's got the sharp nine and the major seven this is a D major chord that Rocky likes to use and there's actually no third in it so that's the stuff just from studying this morning just I spent uh, maybe not even an hour going through my DC music school lessons huh? And I took these ideas and I watched the videos that he sent me as the promo videos I, I shared with you earlier. And I came up with something like this. So I relied on my all these skills that I to told you about. Speaking of which, if you saw that Birelli clip earlier, you notice that he likes to use this chord as well. So that's the point. You have to listen to a lot of music and hopefully not too many different styles of music at the same time. So you can get used to the sound of one particular artist. So Rocky and Birelli like to use this chord, this A7 chord. So that's something new that you can just try to plug in. And then you can use your knowledge of theory to, to figure out a, an, an arpeggio from it. So here's one. So I'll make more videos about practicing and how to acquire these skills. Or if you have any suggestions, leave a comment or something. So please, please, please tune into the show on May 2nd. You're not going to regret it. I promise you.
Thank you.